What's up guys, Jay here from Tap and Turn Gaming coming at you today with another installment in our Top 10 Secret Tech series. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the Top 10 White Cards uh, for EDH that we deem quote unquote as Secret Tech Cards, which uh, to us means cards that, you know, don't see a lot of play, aren't heavily played, but uh, they do bring some sort of, uh, you know, really nice or cool effect uh, to the table. So, uh, again, if you've been following our series, we've done uh, every other color in the color pie except for white. So today we're going to be taking a look at some white cards. So let's uh, kick it off here. So we have five creatures, three enchantments, one instant, and one sorcery. So let's take a look at the creatures first. First up we have Avatar of Hope. Uh, it's an 8 cost, 4-9, uh, that makes it so that if you have 3 or less life, it costs 6 less to play. Uh, you know, very situational. Uh, generally, you probably don't want to be in that situation where you have 3 or less life, but uh, if you do find yourself in that situation, this guy will cost you... Uh, just double white to cast instead of six and double white. So, you know, that is a pretty nice little thing to have. And uh, this guy's kind of like an emergency button um, because it has flying and it can block any number of creatures. So it's kind of one of those things where if you get to a point where you feel like you're screwed and maybe your opponent has, you know, amassed an army that's about to, uh, you know, swing in for lethal next turn. Uh, you know, you could drop this. If you meet that stipulation of three or less life, you could play this for two white mana and have a 4-9 flyer that can block any number of creatures. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a kooky card, but I feel like it has, you know, a nice effect. You know, the fact that it can block any number of creatures is, is pretty nice. Even if uh, you're able to somehow maybe resurrect this out of the graveyard with some sort of reanimation spell... Or even if you hard cast it for 8, I mean, casting something for 8 mana in EDH isn't unheard of by any means. So uh, I felt like this card deserved a spot on the list. Uh, I, I just like the flavor of it, really. Um, but it does have a nice little effect, that the fact that it flies and it can block any number of creatures. So it you know has the potential to save your butt. Uh, next up we have Blinding Angel. It's a 5 cost 2-4 flyer, and when it deals combat damage to a player, that player skips his or her next combat phase. Um, so I, I generally don't see this card too often. Um, you know, I want to say it's probably played out there somewhere, but I personally haven't seen it. Um, you know, a whole hell of a lot myself, but uh, that's a pretty nice effect that if you hit your opponent with this creature, they skip their next combat phase. So if you can, you know, consistently swing in and hit your opponent with this, maybe you have something like a Rogue's Passage or uh, something else that makes this creature unblockable or, uh, you know, gives it protection from a color or whatnot where you can consistently make sure it hits your opponent, they'll never be able to declare a combat phase ever again so uh, that's a pretty potent ability and uh, you know a, a 2 4 for 5 isn't terrible but uh, the fact that it flies makes it that you know a little more likely that you will be able to uh, swing in with it and hit next up we have devote uh, I'm sorry devoted caretaker it's a one cost one two where you can pay one white and tap it and target permanent you control gains protection from instant spells and from sorcery spells until end of turn so uh, I think it's a pretty cool card um, the fact that it will um, give a permanent uh, protection from instants and sorceries so you know you could target your creatures your lands your artifacts your enchantments anything that you have on the board um, so you know you could use this protect a creature from spot removal an artifact or enchantment from you know spot removal uh, you know a, a planeswalker from spot removal you know any instant or sorcery this will allow you to protect whatever your opponent's trying to target to get it off the board so I felt like this was a nice little card, plus it only costs one white mana to cast, so uh, and only one white mana and tapping it to activate. So I felt like that was a pretty potent ability and a nice little package, so I felt like it deserved a spot on the list. 
Next we have Intrepid Hero, a 3 cost 1-1 one, one human soldier where you can tap him to destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. Uh, this guy's pretty similar to the black creature Big Game Hunter, except uh, Big Game Hunter uh, has an enter the battlefield effect where he does the same exact thing. Um, but this card you can, you know, reuse just by simply tapping it to destroy a creature with power 4 or greater. And let's face it, if you're playing EDH, somebody's going to have a creature with power 4 or greater on the board. So, uh, you know, this guy is pretty nice to uh, just simply by tapping him to remove one of your opponent's big threats off the board. Granted that it has 4 or greater power. But uh, if it's a big threat, it probably is going to have 4 or greater power. So... This guy's pretty nice. Uh, you know, he obviously doesn't get around things that are indestructible and um, stuff like that, but um, it's reusable kill uh, and just straight up destruction. No color restriction or anything. The creature can be an artifact, it can be any color. Just by simply tapping this guy, he'll blow it up. So uh, I felt like he deserved a spot on the list as well, and I don't see him played too often. Next we have Loxodon Gatekeeper. It's a 4 cost 2 3 elephant soldier uh, that makes it so that artifacts, creatures, and lands your opponent's control come into play tapped. Uh, so that's a pretty strong ability. Um, basically slows down your opponents um, from casting their stuff because it makes their lands come into play tapped. Uh, even if they do happen to cast a creature, that's going to come into play tapped. So that will kind of shut down. Uh, maybe your opponent has things that are granting their team haste. You know, that'll kind of shut them down or at least slow them down for a turn. And uh, their artifacts as well. So, you know, if someone plays a uh, like a mana rock, it's going to come into play tapped so they can't use it immediately to, uh, you know, mana ramp themselves so plus this guy's a, a pretty decent body a two three for four so uh but his ability is really where he shines so those are the five creatures that we uh picked for this top 10 list for secret tech next up we're going to move on to the three enchantments that we have first up is sarah's blessing it's a two cost white enchantment that gives creatures you control vigilance um i hardly ever see this card played at all and I feel like Vigilance is a very underrated ability. Um, giving your entire team Vigilance means that you can just swing away and not have to worry about keeping anything back to block on your opponent's turn because none of your stuff's going to tap when it attacks. So that gives you a pretty significant advantage in combat, I would say. Next up we have Sarah's, uh, I'm sorry, Sarah's Liturgy. It's a 4 cost white enchantment, 2 and 2 white. During your upkeep you may put a verse counter on it and then you can pay a white and sacrifice it to destroy up to X target artifacts and or enchantments where X is the number of verse counters on it. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's a pretty potent ability, I would say. I mean, yeah, it takes a little bit of time to rack up the, uh, the verse counters uh, that you put on this. But, uh, you know, every upkeep, you know, if you get this down on turn four, maybe your opponents don't have anything... Uh, artifacts or enchantments on the board yet and then you start racking up the verse counters on this and then maybe people start overextending and playing artifacts and enchantments but uh, maybe they don't maybe they see this on the board and maybe they start holding things back because they see this on the board and know that you could just uh, crack it for one lonely white mana at any time to destroy their their grave pact or their uh, debtor's knell or you know some you know, really ridiculously powerful enchantment or even an artifact because it'll do artifacts as well. So um, it is a bit of a slow card, but I feel like it's a pretty uh, a pretty powerful card once you start racking up the verse counters on it. Uh, not only will it let you blow up as many things as you have counters on it for, but it might make your opponents hold things back and uh, try to use a spell on this to destroy it so that they can start playing their other things and now they've you know lost one card uh destroying this and maybe you have something else more powerful that you can now cast on the board so it's a pretty cool card i like it and then lastly for our enchantments is sigil of the new dawn a four cost white enchantment whenever one of your creatures goes to the yard you can pay one in a white if you do return that card to your hand um when it goes to the yard from play so if it dies you can pay one in a white 
and if you do, it gets returned to your hand instead of going to your graveyard. Um, I personally play this in a lot of my white decks, but I don't ever really see it being played by anybody else. I feel like this is some really potent uh, creature recursion. Um, so basically, when any any of your things dies, your creatures, uh, if you have that two mana to invest into it, instead of it going to your graveyard, it's going to go back to your hand. So you can recast it again later. So um, white really doesn't have a whole lot in the form of uh, creature recursion. Uh, at least not mono white stuff. I mean, I know there's a few things. Uh, you know, you have like... Uh, Myria the Sky Ruin and Amiria Shepherd and Sun Titan, things of that nature. But uh, there's not a really, you know, big plethora of mono white cards that will let you recur creatures out of the graveyard. And I, I feel like this is a really underrated card that lets you do just that. Alright, next we're going to take a look at our instants and sorceries. To round it out, we have one instant and one sorcery. Our instant is Come Uppance. It's a four cost white instant. Uh, it has a wall of text on it, but basically what it does is um, it will prevent damage from a source if the source of that damage is a spell. Uh, when you cast this, it will shoot that damage back to the spell's controller. Uh, if the source is a creature, it will shoot the damage back to the creature that's dealing the damage. So let's say your opponent tries to alpha strike you uh, with a bunch of creatures. Now you cast come up it's in response. Uh, all of those creatures, uh, their damage is going to get prevented, and then the damage that they would have dealt is going to get shot back to their face, and they're probably going to die. Uh, if someone tries to cast a, you know, like an X red burn spell on you or something of that nature. Uh, you cast come up and send you'll shoot that damage back at the controller of the spell. So I feel like it's a pretty uh, a pretty solid white card. It's uh, similar to stuff like uh, Shining Shoal and Harm's Way, but um, on a massive scale. So it's, it's a pretty solid card. And uh, this is probably not a too difficult card to uh, pick up. It's only $0.45, cents and it came in uh, one of the Commander pre-cons. But I generally don't see this played very often either, and I think it's a very powerful card. And then lastly, we have Profound Journey. It's a 7-cost white sorcery, which allows you to return target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And it has Rebound. So... It does cost a lot of mana at 7, but uh, the fact that it will allow you to return any permanent from your graveyard right to the battlefield is pretty nice. The fact that it has rebound, so when you cast this, it resolves, and then you, um, you exile it as it resolves, and then at the beginning of your next upkeep, you cast this card again without paying its mana cost. So you essentially, for 7 mana, get to resurrect 2 permanents out of your graveyard and put them right back onto the battlefield. So um, I feel like for 7 mana, getting 2 permanents is not a bad trade-off. So yeah, that's uh, that's about it, guys. That's our top 10 cards in white, uh, our secret tech white cards for EDH. So uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it so that we know to keep making videos like this in the future, and it really does help out uh, for other people to find the videos on our channel if you thumbs it up. Uh, leave me some comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of this list or if there are any other cards that you think uh, should have made it onto the list, you know, let us know. We really like to hear your uh, your comments and your suggestions on stuff like this. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, Tap and Turn Gaming, please crush that subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. But this has been Jay with Tap and Turn Gaming. Again, hope everybody enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll catch you later. Thanks a lot for watching.